From the newsroom of the Bryant College Station Eagle, this is the Brazos Sports Press Kids. And now, the Eagle High School Sports Team, Alex Miller and Jake Weiss. What's going on, everyone? You're listening to the Brazos Sports Preps Cast, a podcast about high school football here in the Brazos Valley. I'm Alex Miller from the Eagle, joined always by Jake Weiss, the Eagles High School Sports Reporter. Jake, got a little chilly this last week, wouldn't you say? I would, yeah. I would say we're both bundled up here. I like the ja- jacket, Alex, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm hiding a coffee stain on, oh. on the bottom, so don't look too close. Hopefully you're just listening uh, in the car, maybe. Well, it's but a stylish jacket, so I just thought it looked good. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, Jake, we started with 20 teams last week in the playoffs, and then there were nine. Okay? Got nine Brazos Valley teams left in the postseason. Last week, saw some chalky wins, a couple of upsets here and there, um, some 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 chalky losses as well. Um, but kind of a, kind of a status quo week, but I think the, the, the two upsets we'll get to in a little bit with Bremont and Lexington, yeah. that's what really caught my eye from the first week of the playoffs. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I'd agree with you there. I saw, uh, I guess those were both Thursday games, right? Right. So I was out in Franklin or I was out in Waller covering Franklin's game. And I remember, I think I saw your tweet about it and I was like, I had to read it a couple of times. I was like, wait, did that just happen? Yeah. So... Uh, we'll get into that one here in a minute, but hey, Jake. First, let's start with the College Station schools. They got they they got it going uh, in route to a couple wins. Uh, College Station and Consol they kind of struggled. It seemed to get it going there early, but the Tigers and Cougars really found their groove in a way to winning in the first round. On the Consol side, Seguin led fourteen seven early in the second quarter. But the Tigers turned the tables fast. Looked like Peyton Bjork stepped up big in the receiving game. Uh, you know, with Wesley Watson out, they needed a guy like mm-hmm. that to step up, have him, guy like Carter Frank out there. And then Keyshawn Thomas and Trey Turner, they just did their thing, right? Or, excuse me, Trey Taylor. Uh, you know, impressive stat. Consol's defense only allowed 150 yards of, def- of offense, I should say. Yeah, no, uh, Consol got it going, and uh, we talked – was this, I guess, two weeks ago in our preview edition, kind of wondering, we were kind of wondering what they were going to look like, you know, without Wesley, but uh, back to business, business as usual. Kind of feels like they're they're figuring things out on offense without uh, Wesley. For sure. Well, and then for College Station, San Antonio Wagner, they got up 14-0 in that first quarter, and, you know, that's just kind of where the Cougars won, <laughs> won their opponents right now. They tend to well, play well from behind, 37 unanswered from College Station, Seemed like usual suspects did their thing by a committee approach for the Cougars. You know, being able to give the ball to Tony Hamilton mm-hmm. it, in key situations seems to have been a, a good adjustment for the Cougars and kind of what's become a depleted backfield for them as the year has gone along. Yeah, they've got a kind of a tr- triple-headed monster, I guess. Uh, I don't know if you're a Harry Potter fan, are you? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so you know of a dog that has uh, yeah. three heads? Yeah, I don't remember his name at all, but uh, <laughs> every time I think of the three you know, running backs they've been relying on, I think of that. Like that Fluffy. Yeah, Fluffy. Yeah, there we go. That's what the dog's name was. I was like, it's something It's something silly. Shout out Hagrid. Yeah, but yeah, Tony, uh, Tony Hamilton, uh, Zach Dang, and Aiden Martinez-Brown, those have been kind of the three... Three guys in the run game, and hey, uh, Arrington Maiden broke off a big run. I want to say he broke off like a seventeen, like seventeen yard run at one point. So hey, he, even he's got some, he's got some wheels. He, he likes to show them off. For sure. Well, hey, now things get a little trickier for for each of these teams. Okay, College Station, they're gonna play Angleton on Friday night in Cyprus, and it seems like maybe because of that. Kansal locked into hosting a home game <laughs> against Fullshear in a second round matchup. So. Kind of looking at College Station versus Angleton first. Angleton, they want a very competitive District 10, 5A1. All, both of these teams are from that district. I think they that district swept their first-round games, which pretty impressive feat speaks to the depth of the district. And Angleton's been on a roll, okay? They've won seven straight since they dropped their district opener. And Deshaun Thomas is seems to be their go-to player at running back. He's got... 17 touchdowns on the year so jake 
you were out at College Station yesterday talking with coach and players. Uh, what's kind of the vibe from the Cougars as they're coming into this matchup? Yeah, you know, it's early, but, um, you know, the thing they really identified early on was that, hey, this is a team that can put up points. We're going to have to step up on both sides of the ball, defense to stop them, and offense, we're, you know, defense, we're going to have to limit the big plays, uh, you know, keep, keep them out of the, you know, keep them out in key situations. And then on offense, too, uh, really what they're kind of stressing this week is, hey, uh, on offense, we might have to put up some points. Uh, we don't want to have drives. Uh, I'm blanking on what uh, Coach Pryor called it, but he basically said, hey, on offense, we don't want to have penalties that kill drives, meaning, you know, hey, we get a first down, you know, first down, and then we get pushed back 15 yards. That kind of thing can't happen. Uh, so really for them, it's sustaining drives, keep the ball moving on offense, keep the defense, their defense off the field as much as they can. And then when they're on defense, it's, Hey, limit big plays. Keep them off the scoreboard for as long as we can. For sure. Uh, College Station Angleton, they played before in the playoffs yeah. about six years ago. And a uh, kid named B.J. Foster, who turned out to be a five-star recruit, had a monster game. So the Cougars definitely have Angleton's – or the Angle, the Cougars have the attention drawn on Angleton this week, knowing what kind of team they're capable of being. So – on the flip side, Consol hosting Fulshire this week. Fulshire's having its best season ever, okay? School opened 2016, uh, varsity program since 2018. They made the playoffs for the first time ever last season and lost in the first round. So a lot of, lot of firsts for this school. They, they have won the most games in school history this season. They got 10. That's double of what they've done. They had five the last two seasons and won their first playoff game in school history last week. But this is a team Consol's familiar with, though. Uh, you know, they've been, they were in the same district as Fulshire the last two years, and the Tigers really had their number. Shut them out big two years ago, went on the road last year, kind of won a scrappy game down there in Rosenberg. And uh, that was, that was kind of when Consol, the, the injuries started to pile up for them last year, and they really started having to become really creative on offense last year found ways to score points and get good things on that side of the ball. You know, certainly going to help the Tigers that they are playing at home, I would guess. You know, don't have to travel, familiar with your surroundings. And, you know, that it seems like from what, what Coach Fedora and some of the players told me yesterday, stopping the run game is going to be very important, you know. They've got a kid named Davion Goodley. He's averaging about 167 yards a game. He had had over 100 yards in every single game this season until last week when he really just played in the first half. He only had like 67. So, you know, slowing him down is going to be critical for the Tigers. You know, I talked with Brock Slayton, Consol's linebacker. He's actually buddies with uh, Full Shear's quarterback named Parker Williams and uh, went to summer camp together out at T-Bar-M for a couple years apparently. So a little, uh, little friendly battle out there on Friday night. <laughs> so, you know, these are two games, Jake. I think, you know, I'd probably pick the College Station schools to win. Uh, but, you know, these are not games that they can overlook either. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Um, I think right now, too, uh, supposed to be predictions pretty close. I want to say three points. Co College Station's maybe favored, depending on where you're, where you're looking at, by like three points. And then uh, Console maybe favored by a touchdown. Uh, with, yeah, it sounds say, yeah. about right. So uh, it's going to be close. And then, uh, you know, both schools, I mean, you talk to Console, I talk to players at College Station. No one's taking it lightly. I mean, they're saying, hey, you know, because something I didn't really think about, but, you know, this is the last week before Thanksgiving break. So. Uh, that was something Coach Pryor talked about that really was like, for me, I was like, oh, didn't even think about that. But he was talking about how, hey, you know, you really got to lock in this week because all your buddies that aren't on the football team, they're getting a week to goof off. Friday, you got to take a bus trip and, you know, you got to go play a football game. You don't have time. You can't think about, hey, what am I doing for Thanksgiving week to goof off? You know, you got to lock in for the game. So I think both schools are going to be, uh, you know, not taking this game lightly, this week lightly. For sure. Well, Moving along, uh, something I want to touch on, just a couple of area upsets last week. We kind of mentioned it at the beginning, but we said last week, I think, Bremond and Lexington could be sleeper teams from the Brazos Valley. And then, lo and behold, the Tigers and the Eagles 
they're on to basketball season this week and after being bounced in the first round. So, you know, we when we talked about Bremont last week, we knew it was going to be a difficult matchup for them against Falls City, a team that's, you know, young but really starting to find its way, really came along in district play. Braylon Wortham had another big game. He got the Tigers ahead in the fourth quarter. But then, hey, Fall City turned right back around, bust an 87-yard touchdown to get that comeback win. Kind of a disappointing end to, to a pretty decent season for a young Tigers team. Coming off a year, they went to the third round last year and definitely probably felt like they had a better team this year. And so, you know, probably a pretty disappointing end for the Bremont Tigers this year. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, over in Lexington, you know, they won their district, uh, but they fell to uh, uh, Wallace Brazos, yeah. 35-28. Um, you know, disappointing finish for them, especially since they were undefeated. They were let 10-0 and coming into that right. one. Uh, but, you know, they've got a bright future. They're another young team. Kind of we were just talking about Bremont being young. I think Lexington might be even a little younger uh, with quarterback, you know, Case Evans, Joseph Kerr, just really young team. But, yeah, both of these games – you know, pretty disappointing ends to the seasons for the, both those schools. And it's disappointing, too, because, you know, up to that point, been pretty strong regular season uh, for both of them. So disappointing. But, you know, the good news is most of these te- most bo- most of those guys are pretty young. So hopefully next year they can go back and make some noise. Yeah, I have a feeling that, you know, this this next August when we're doing our preseason mm-hmm. podcast, I have a feeling, Jake, we might be mentioning Bremont and Lexington. So. <laughs> Two teams to watch out for heading into next season. All right, Jake, three games to watch this week. You know, Raz is Christian. They're playing Hallettsville Sacred Heart Friday at 7 o'clock in Elgin. Raz is Christian. They're the only other local team still in the playoffs. They beat Waco Riker 27-2 to last week. Yeah, and uh, credit to uh, Corey Washington, first-year head coach, picks up his first playoff win, and they got to do it at home. So right. I'm sure they were pretty pumped up about that. Yeah, I'm sure they were. You know, our Brazos Valley Player of the Week poll ends after the regular season, but if we had done it this week, I think Jackson Caffey would have been a prime candidate. Ran for 170 yards, two touchdowns on 12 carries, also threw a touchdown pass to Chance Locker. Yeah, and then over on uh, Hallettsville, Sacred Heart side, you know, a guy they're really going to, or a guy Brazos Christian is going to have to watch out for this week is uh, Brady Haas, or Haas. Uh, Haas, yeah. Is it, okay, whoops. Uh, he's their leading rusher and tackler. Uh, and from the looks of it, you know, they've kind of have a little trouble turning the ball over. Uh, Brazos Christian may want to, you know, try and take advantage of that. We've talked about them before and kind of forcing turnovers a little bit, you know, with some of those guys that have been in the player of the week poll. Uh, but, yeah, they've got 10 interceptions on the year, uh, four fumbles this season. So kind of turn it over a little bit. Uh, Eagles are going to want to capitalize off that. Uh, you know, turnovers helps. And, you know, turnovers help. We know they helped uh, Brazos Christian last week. Right. Jack, uh, Jake's uh, Shattuck. Yeah. Shattuck, yeah. He had an interception. Uh, Brody Garner and Isaiah Perkins each recovered a fumble. So, you know, they're going to be on the road. Well, neutral site game. But, right. You know have to leave the comfy confines of home and, you know, hit the road this week. But, hey, defense came to play last week, so uh, who knows what's going to happen this week? For sure. All right. Brenham, they're playing Belton Friday night at 730 here at Merrill Green Stadium. And, Brian, rematch of a non-district game where Brenham really beat up on the Tigers at home. Jake, they say beating a team twice is a hard thing to do, but – I got to think if Burnham keeps doing what they've been doing, they should be moving on to the third round. I think so, too. Uh, well, heck, Burnham's have has a pretty good record this year at Merrill Green. Right. Uh, they're, what, 1-0, 2-0? Oh, oh, no. I guess they didn't play a non-district. Yeah, they, they, oh, right? they, they beat Rudder, Rudder there, and then they beat Brian, but I think that was at home. Yeah, that was at home. Yep, that was at home for them. But, uh, yeah, this is a stadium. It feels weird, once again, like, this week it's been weird for me. It's kind of when we talk about some of these games because, uh, you know, you want to say it's a road game, but then you're like, well, no, I guess it's a road game for both teams. But uh, <laughs> in Brenham's case, you know, hey, they've, they've played here before. Uh, I kind of think that, you know, and it's pretty close by. I, I think that might be a bit of an advantage for them. For sure. See what Ryland Wooten and company can do. And then last game to watch, Madisonville playing Belleville Friday night at 7 o'clock in Navasota. This is a great area round matchup in 4A Division II. Mustangs got a good win over LaGrange last week, but they're going to have to get through the big bad Bramas <laughs> of Belleville. 
They don't have to play in the pasture of pain, <laughs> Jake, but Belleville is unbeaten, and they have just clobbered teams with their run game this year. West Orange Stark pushed Belleville last week, though, only lost by a touchdown, got a score late, kind of made it a little closer than maybe what the scoreboard indicated it looked like. But, uh, you know, Madisonville, if they can get a win over Belleville, that would be a statement for the Mustangs. Yeah, and, you know, the crazy thing, too, I, I was kind of thinking about this earlier. Uh, when I saw this matchup, I was like, oh, they've got a common opponent this year because they both played uh, Navasota. Right. Uh, Madisonville lost to Navasota earlier in the year, 20-7 to to 21 in overtime. But uh, but I want to say the next week, Belleville, Belleville beat up on beat, Navasota pretty on good. Navasota, uh, but that was so long ago. I mean, those were two non-district games. So uh, I'm interested to see what it looks like this week. Uh, it might be kind of a clash of styles Mm -hmm. if you will uh you know belleville runs a slot t or slot t variant uh, on offense and the mustangs you know i mean they just threw six touchdown passes last week against lagrange uh shout out to ty williams he had all six right right yeah only a sophomore too right yeah he's he's another one of those young guys uh or one one of those young quarterbacks we we talked about before so yeah clash of styles this week but uh i'm interested i mean i'm just interested in this matchup yeah, this Madisonville team, they're looking to make history and uh they'll have a they'll have a good opponent on Friday. But uh just elsewhere real quick, Franklin, they're playing Anawak 7:30 on Thursday in Waller. Jake, I believe you're going to be there if all goes to plan. Centerville's playing Honey Grove 7:30 on Friday in Van and down in 2A Division 2, Burton playing Rock Springs 7 o'clock Friday in Johnson City. That's a hike. Jake, you know where Johnson City is? Nope. You're new to Texas. Uh, No. Well, it's pretty far away. So oh, okay. It's north of San Antonio about an hour. So going to be a long <laughs> rest, bus ride for the Panthers, but suspect they will take care of business. All right, Jake, let's close with this question. There are nine Brazos Valley teams left in the playoffs. Do we think that there will still be five or more Brazos Valley teams playing next week on Thanksgiving, which is kind of the first big goal of any team that makes the playoffs. Yeah. Hmm. I have to answer it? Yeah. Oh, man, tough. Okay. I was hoping I could maybe, you know, run out the tape or something there. Uh, <laughs> you know, leave them on a little cliffhanger. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to say yes. Uh, I think we're kind of getting to that point where, you know, I mean, everyone in the playoffs, everyone who makes the playoffs is good. But as, you know, we keep going down and down each round, you know, better and better teams are going to emerge victorious. I think right at this point, five, I think I think we've got five, five that can make it. Maybe even a little more, maybe even six or seven. I don't know. But I think five, I think five for sure make it. I, I think I agree. Uh, just listening off those last three, I think all three of those teams win. And honestly, they might win pretty big. And uh, looking at the rest of the schedule, you know, that's three, so you've only got to get two more. Yeah. And one one to think Burnham's going to beat Belton. They've already beaten them. And, you know, kind of looking at the rest of these, you know, I think the College Station schools could probably get it done. And uh, just looking at Brazos Christian, I think they could get it done. And who knows? Madisonville could probably pull up an upset. If they all won this week, I wouldn't be shocked. There might be a, there might be a loss in, or two here or there. But I definitely think that uh, there will be five or more Brazos Valley teams playing on Turkey Day this next Thursday. So, Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, for, for all those out there. <laughs> so, All right, Jake, that's going to do it. Yeah, sounds good to me. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Brazos Sports Prepscast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Be sure to check theeagle.com for all of our high school football playoff coverage here in the Brazos Valley. For Jake Weiss, I'm Alex Miller. We'll see you next week.